Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of The Science of Monster Hunter. Today, we're covering a particularly bizarre fanged beast, a Jarakan, which I've given the binomial name Xenopithecus tetranicus, which means four-clawed weird ape. A Jarakan is a denizen of the oil well basin. Uh, and despite its proximity to the oil, it very rarely gets all, you know, oiled up like this. It seems to pretty exclusively stay in the upper levels where it's drier and hotter. Because heat rises, and that makes the upper levels of the oil well, like I said, hotter and drier, and therefore kind of a safe area for a Jarakan to roam around without uh, having any threat put on it by the other animals of the region that really can't tolerate that sort of uh, heat. One thing that is super interesting about a Jarakan is that I looked at its teeth, and they're, they're really interesting. They're kind of adapted for both uh, carnivory and, and omnivory, which you say it says here, but... A Jarakan has so much mineral all over its body that I feel like there's no way that it's not eating some kind of rock like uh, Gravios is. Eating rock seems to be pretty common among animals in the Monster Hunter universe. The one thing that throws kind of a wrench in the A Jarakan eating rock uh, hypothesis is that is that the people of Azuz don't seem to have had any experience with rock-eating animals prior to Gravios showing up. Uh, that being said, a Jarakan also doesn't have teeth that are particularly well adapted for eating big chunks of rock. It has, you know, fairly sharp teeth, which would be very difficult to keep maintained if you were a rock eater, and it has these little fine teeth in the front. Mammals also don't really replace their teeth as frequently as reptiles, and I'm considering a Jarakan a mammal because it is a fanged beast, and those are all quite mammalian, and it also has really uh, pronounced heterodonty in its mouth, uh, which is very common among mammals and, and very rare among reptiles. A Jarakan also has a very well-developed uh, nose, which indicates to me that it's at least going after something that makes a smell. The only thing I've seen a Jarakan attack with, like, real intent to kill and eat is uh, Kranodoth, which are the little bipedal carnivores that run around in the oil well basin and mostly eat Geldron. And they might be a decent source for a Jarakan's, uh, you know, minerals that it integrates into its body because of something called biomagnification. Biomagnification occurs when something on a lower trophic level eats a little trace amounts of something throughout its entire life that its body doesn't break down. Because it, uh, those things just like sit in its body, when something slightly bigger comes along and eats that thing, then the bigger thing takes in immediately all the toxins that that first thing has absorbed throughout its entire life in just one meal. And that continues and continues and continues, and so you get these really high concentrations of heavy metals and potential toxins at the top of the food chain. A Jarakan is nowhere near the top of the food chain, but it is a fairly large predator and would be consuming enough smaller predators, uh, assuming it eats Kranodoth, that it would be able to integrate some of those minerals, because those Kranodoth have taken in those minerals through their entire lives just by living in the oil well. The other thing is, though, this might be a two-way street, because according to Kranodath's uh, monster manual entry, or like field notes entry, I forget what it's called exactly, um, they do leap on and attack large monsters with the intent of eating them. So Kranodath are occupying two separate uh, levels in the food web based on their behavior. When they're alone, they go after smaller things, and then they get eaten by bigger things, and then the bigger things that eat those big things get attacked and potentially eaten by Kranodath, depending on how weak they are. Anyway, we'll get to more of that in a Kranodath episode, but a Jarakan is still super, super cool. It has insane grip strength. Um, it hangs from the roof all of the time, which is not, uh, you know, out of the question for an ape, but a Jarakan is gigantic, and it has these huge arms and pectoral muscles to enable that. On its back, it also has this huge, potentially hollow uh, set of recurved osteoderms that are filled with minerals. Osteoderms are bones that grow out of the skin. It also has this giant tail. Uh, and I have illustrated the giant tail here striking the back of the, uh, the plates, which is something that it does very frequently as a threat display or communication. Speaking of communication, a Jarakan is actually fairly social during certain times of the year. Uh, during the fallow and the plenty, a Jarakan is tr it's a completely solitary animal. But, just like a lot of other groups of animals, they form big groups during the breeding season, which for them is the inclemency. It might not necessarily be a true social grouping, though. It could be an example of what we call predator mobbing, where a bunch of predators that are not affiliated with each other socially, that don't live together or share a pack or a family, group together with an abundance of food just so they can cooperate and bring down larger targets. 
This happens all the time with crocodiles, and it's hypothesized to also occur with dinosaurs. True pack hunting is very, very rare in the animal kingdom, and while it is more common in mammals, I find uh, this example of like predator mobbing potentially more likely, especially because some of the Ajarakan that are working together kind of just seem to all be running in the same direction without coordinating, which is like the hallmark of pack hunting. One more thing that I think is interesting is this like big kind of chin tusk that Ajara Khan seems to have that it might use for digging. In general, it seems like it's eating a wide, wide variety of things. Um, just from the mix of its teeth structures, the apparent need to take in loads of minerals over the course of its life, and this kind of weird lower chin adaptation that could be used for either digging or uh, combat with other Ajara Khan. All in all, uh, one of my favorite monster designs, I have the Gun Lance, I think it's pretty cool. Unfortunately, Jara Khan doesn't have a great sword, and I'm a little sad about that. But I've had a great time fighting it over the course of Monster Hunter Wilds, and I think it makes a really cool point to talk about biomagnification and uh, some of those other processes. Anyway, that's a Jarakon. Please let me know which monster you'd like to see next, large, small, or endemic. I've already done Dapper, Ray Dao, and some other familiar faces. And there are many other entries in the works.